Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. I thought today I'd have a look at this NAD C510 DAC. This is the first DAC that I ever bought. I bought it back in 2017, brand new. I think I paid about $1,700 or something like that. And it's because I wanted to set up my own standalone hi-fi stereo system and I needed a DAC for that. Um, I did do a fair bit of research. I found that there were plenty of cheaper DACs and I found that there were plenty more expensive ones. You can spend an awful lot more than this uh, on a DAC if you want to. Um, but I'm very, very happy with this DAC. So I thought we'd have a bit of a look at it today. Um, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for NAD. They've got a reputation of providing um, high-end gear without the high-end prices. Okay, they're not sort of like the upper high-end, but they have a reputation for value for money. Um, they have had some quality problems from time to time, um, but I haven't had any problems with this DAC. So let's have a bit of a look. Uh, the remote control is not very exciting, but um, there you are. Neither is the front very exciting. Um, this just has a power button. You can change the source there, and it has a volume button and a display that basically tells you what input you're listening to. So net, let's now turn it around and have a look at the back. I guess part of the reason I spent so long researching as to what I wanted is that I wasn't sure what I wanted. Um, I just wasn't sure what functionality I needed. I was afraid of buying a DAC and then discovering some need a little bit later on as my needs evolved and then having to buy a new DAC. So, um, that's part of the reason why I went for this one. So this one, um, it goes up to 192 kilohertz. So I thought that I might like to get into some high res audio. So it does support up to 192 kilohertz. But as you can see, it's got plenty of uh, inputs and outputs on the back. So one of the things that really appealed to me is that this has balanced outputs. Now I currently do not have uh, an amplifier that supports balanced inputs. I do have a preamp that supports balanced inputs, but it's my hope one day that I'll have a fully balanced system. So that's why um, I was really pleased to have that. It has AES, which I have never used, um, but the coax and the optical, I think I've used both of those, but these days I don't use those at all. These days I use mostly USB. Um, my old faithful late 2011 MacBook Pro is what I use most of the time to provide music to this. But also sometimes I'll watch a, um, a DVD or a Blu-ray. So it's got uh, HDMI inputs as well and a HDMI out. So it has got a fair bit of flexibility. NAT actually calls this a, a digital preamplifier, and I guess, I suppose it, it probably is. So as you can see, there's a fair lot, bit of functionality on this as compared to say a DAC that just takes, for example, optical in and gives you only 44.1 kilohertz uh, CD quality out and nothing more. So um, yeah, I was quite pleased to have that functionality. Um, just as I start to take some of these screws out, um, what can I say about the sound? I guess one of the things I wanted to make sure that I didn't get was a muddy sound. I didn't want a muddy sound. I didn't want a sound that was sort of too mellow. So this certainly does not have this. Um, I think this is a very pure sort of a sound without being too bright. Um, I've, my system has kind of, I guess, evolved around this DAC. So I've gone through a number of different amplifiers and a number of different speakers um, on, this, on this particular DAC. And, um, you know, I've been quite satisfied with the results. So, you know, in, in my opinion, I think it does what a DAC should do. The last thing that you want a DAC to do is to give you a coloured sound. You know, if you particularly want a coloured sound, uh, you don't want it to be coming from the DAC. The DAC should be the least coloured thing in your whole system, I would have thought, because you know this is really the beginning of your analogue domain. And if you're coloured here, then it just flows through the whole thing. 
So you can see this unit was made in China. We'll see what the build quality looks like in a moment when we get these last screws out. Um, look, I am wanting to get another DAC at some point. That's a fair way down my two purchase list, um, but I do want to get a, a higher end DAC than this one. Um, this DAC, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm very, very happy with it, but it just doesn't seem to figure really very prominently in discussions in the audio file world. And I'm not sure what the reasons for that are. Maybe NAD didn't advertise it very well or, or what, I don't know. I feel it deserves to be better known that it is. Um, so I'm very, very happy with it, but I want to sort of continue to evolve my system. So I want to get a higher end DAC than this. I'm not sure what I'd get, maybe a shit, or maybe a, um, a PS Audio or something like that. Um, those are the names I sort of like keep coming back to. Um, I think the new PS Audio um, Direct Stream 2, I think it's called, that's just come out, looks absolutely fantastic, but that's a whole lot more expensive than this. But anyway, we'll sh we shall see. Okay, there we are. And um, you guys are looking for the first time with me. I've never actually had the lid off this before. It's quite solidly built. The chassis is, is really quite solid. I mean, the lid is pretty heavy. The whole thing weighs a fair bit. Uh, as you can see, the design is fairly simple on the inside. There's a lot of space, which I think is a good thing because obviously in a product like this, noise is, is absolutely critical. The last thing that you want is, is problems with noise. And so if you have electronics kind of like cramped up against itself, then you can have noise problems. So having things spread out is a good thing. So obviously this will be the power supply up here. Um, I am guessing that it's a linear power supply. Let's have a closer look and see if we can see just exactly what this is. All right, I can't tell what it is, but it says here on the PCB, SMPS, switch mode power supply. Um, so, you know, some people would argue that in a product like this, you definitely don't want a switch mode power supply. Um, Look, switch mode power supplies can be can be very, very quiet. I mean, they can also be very, very noisy. So, you know, I, I don't think it follows necessarily to say that just because it has a switch mode power supply, it's, it's going to be bad. Um, again, some purists would perhaps argue that for absolute lowest noise, you want a linear power supply. Uh, that doesn't necessarily follow. Um, I would agree that it's probably easier to get a lower noise floor with a linear power supply rather than a switch mode one, but um, there you go. So that's the power supply and if we have a look at the main PCB, I mean, there's only so much that you can tell just by looking at this thing, obviously. Um, I do recall from the paperwork that the way this thing works is, is fully in the digital domain, so to speak. So um, through processing and so on. So it's not, you know, it's not like it's a Sigma Delta DAC, it isn't. Um, so it's all in the digital domain and does its thing, does a heap of whatever it's going to do to it and then turns it into um, an analog signal. So we can see over here, we've got a bunch of, um, they might be, well, they're film capacitors of some sort. So there's a bunch of film capacitors over here, which is not too unexpected. Uh, we've got a an analog devices part over there. 
and the rest of it I couldn't really tell you what it is. Um, I guess one thing I'm sort of interested in is like the USB is here and obviously that's connected to the computer and computers are pretty noisy things so ideally you would want this to be electrically isolated from the rest of the system I don't believe that it is um, it's coming in here and you got a bunch of crystals here so you know you'll, there'll be a USB circuit there to interface to this and I don't know what this XMOS thing is but um, it's got a couple of more crystals as well so it might be a processor of some sort but I can't see any um, electrical isolation so like the closest that I can see is just here that might be a it might be a common mode choke or something like that um, I don't believe it is electrical isolation I think it's a choke um, Yeah, so there you are. So look, what I might do is I'll just have a bit of a, a closer look just under the Maggie lab. And if I see anything interesting, I'll come right back to you. Okay, guys, so look, I don't really have anything further to report on this uh, NAD C510. But look, I'd be really interested to know if you've got some experience of, of DACs, especially sort of DACs in this sort of range and higher end. I'd love to hear in the comments what you think would be a good DAC would be sort of the next step up from this kind of a DAC without spending you know ridiculous amounts of money so I'm not going to be spending tens of thousands of dollars but you know I'd be really interested to hear your opinions as to, to where to go as sort of like the next logical stop step after this DAC you know as I've mentioned I'm not dissatisfied with this DAC I'm quite happy with it um, I do like it but I'd also you know, asking myself the question as to you, what is the next step up from here? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe to my channel. It helps me so much. You could also check out my other channel, Watch Out, is about watchmaking. And I've got a Patreon where you can support me as a content creator. Patreon.com slash Audio Nautica. And thank you so much for watching my video. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.